Welcome. If you are viewing this presentation, you may have already invested in a digital badge platform, or perhaps you are just waiting for a little push to get you started. As a leader in the field of clean energy credentialing, IREC, the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, recently received a grant from the ACT Foundation and the National Network of Business and Industry Associations to pursue a pilot dynamic digital credentialing initiative. In this presentation, I'll walk you through our steps and the lessons we learned along the way. First, let me explain IREC's interest in digital badges and credible credentials. IREC has worked hard to establish recognized and valued credentials in our clean energy industry. A digital credential turns the one-way credentialing mark into a two-way real-time indicator. The digital credential, or digital badge as it is often referred to, assembles the complex information of a credential into convenient shorthand. In today's digital world, a mark represented electronically has a much further reach than one printed on a business card. We would like to think that we are ahead of the curve with this trend to go digital. In fact, it is happening everywhere. As I mentioned, our pilot to explore what it takes to issue the digital credential was funded by the ACT Foundation, and we have produced a written case study as well, available on the IREC website. Our goal with this presentation is to share what we learned to encourage other organizations to start using digital credentials. Most important to note, the digital credential serves multiple parties. This includes the credentialing body, the credential earner, the hiring organization, and the consumer. Let's start by looking at the credential itself. The digital credential has metadata embedded in it so that when clicked upon, someone can view all pertinent information. The credential is no longer a standalone title, but a comprehensive explanation of what the certificate did to earn the credential and enough about the organization to understand if it's credible or just a rubber stamp. When someone clicks on the badge visual, they are taken to the software badging platform website to view the details. Metadata includes the earner name or certificate's name, the issue and expiration dates, skills, and these skills are selected by the credentialing body, but in the badging platform are linked to labor market data and can link to current job openings that look for that particular skill. There's also criteria to earn the badge and the standard met as well as supporting evidence such as a certification number, etc., and a link to the information about the issuer. The metadata page lives on the badging platform site, not the credentialing body. Let's take a look at the value for another audience. For the credential holder or certificate, a digital credential is a recognition of skills and can serve to differentiate the certificate in a competitive marketplace. It is a unique marketing opportunity. In the case of our pilot, the certificate is the IREC Certified Instructor and Master Trainer. In another case, the earner would be the practitioner or even a company whose product has earned a digital credential. Here's how the process works in a nutshell from the point of view of the certificate. The credentialing body notifies the certificate he has earned a digital credential. The certificate accepts or claims the credential by creating a profile in the badging platform. He then uses the platform to share the credential through social media and embed on websites, blogs, and in email signatures. The longer the digital credential is available online, the greater the potential for being viewed. The spread of the accomplishment is then exponential. The second party is the hiring organization. This is where the growth potential truly lies. When used consistently, credible digital credentials can help an organization to hire based on competency. A hiring manager can verify a credential in real time and instantly learn more about the issuing body. IBM is just one example of how digital badges provide real value to employers. They launched a bold new digital initiative to attract, engage, and progress talent. Here are some of the reasons they cite for pursuing this initiative. To increase verified talent for our clients, to map available skills in specific gaps, to increase client confidence with demonstrated skills, and to motivate employees to drive their own development. Third are the consumers. We are a society of online shoppers. Once digital credentials find their place in the open market, consumers will have a way to find vetted products and practitioners. Again, with awareness of the value of these digital representations, consumers will look for this digital mark of quality. The consumer will have the opportunity to view the credential on a website, email, signature, or social media, and can click 
to learn more about it rather than just accepting it at face value or ignoring it. Finally, there is the credentialing body. Digital credentials enhance the value of a credential to certificates and prospects. They provide a low cost, yet highly visible opportunity to promote the brand, product, and service. Digital credentials allow the credentialing body to better serve their customer base. There are two main types of digital badges available. In 2011, the MacArthur Foundation, Hashtag, and Mozilla funded a digital media and learning competition for leading organizations, learning and assessment specialists, designers, and technologists to create and test badges and badge systems. The competition explored ways digital badges could be used to help people learn, demonstrate their skills and knowledge, unlock job and educational and civic opportunities, and open new pipelines to talent. The result was an open badge initiative embraced by organizations such as Credly. Credly has created a platform to allow any user to issue any type of badge. This first type of badge can be referred to as a static badge. Once issued, it is unchangeable and there is no real-time validation. By contrast, IREC is issuing a dynamic digital credential that offers real-time validation of credential status. Digital credentials are gaining traction because they are portable, stackable, secure, and verifiable. The distinction that must happen in the marketplace is to identify digital credentials of value versus the rubber stamp. So who uses digital credentials today? Schools, employers, institutions, communities, or groups that create credentials to demonstrate mastery of skills and achievements that are of particular value to the issuer. Professional development courses and assessment-based certificate programs, large companies like Cisco and IBM, professional development programs for teachers, colleges, universities, and the military. So one caveat, this presentation reflects research conducted in the spring and summer of 2015. Much may have changed since then in this evolving field. The information included, however, should give you a ballpark idea and a place to start. As part of our pilot project, we researched three main badging platforms, Acclaim, a product of Pearson, Credly, and ProExam Vault, a product of Professional Examination Services. These platforms describe the benefits of digital badges to credentialing bodies in the following manner. As a way to enhance the value of the credential you issue, provide individual earners with the digital credential they can easily share via email and social media. To increase brand exposure and awareness of your credentialing program as individual earners share their digital credentials. And to expand your marketing reach by creating targeted promotional messages to display on the public digital credential pages, linking visitors with revenue generating programs and events. The badging platform makes it easy for a credentialing body to create a badge template, issue the badge, and track where the badge itself is shared. While the estimates we received from these companies during the project are specific to our project, it may give you an idea of the potential program cost. Each offered a one-time setup fee and annual access fees. Costs are tiered depending upon the number of badges issued each year. The estimates we received ranged from less than $1,000 for Credly's setup fee to $13,000 for Pro Exam Vault, with a claim somewhere in the middle. Annual access fees were in the neighborhood of $1,000 for 400 badges to $8,000 for 1,000 badges. Some of these badging services can be integrated with Moodle, Salesforce, WordPress, Eventbrite, and other platforms. How does it work from the standpoint of the credentialing body? Well, there are five main steps. Create the template, issue the credential, watch the credential holder share the credential, analyze the data, and then survey the stakeholders. Let's start by creating a template. For a credentialing body that currently issues credentials, you would simply extract from your own credentialing system the information to appear on the badge. For an organization entering into the credentialing market, this is a more thoughtful task that requires you to accurately describe the credential and the criteria by which it is earned. The digital credential should represent skills and knowledge demonstrated through an exam or other assessment process. Once your template has been created, you are ready to issue the credential. This may be the most straightforward step of the process. Credentials can be issued in bulk or individually. A CSV template is provided to collect the certificate's data, including email address, certification number, etc., and the file is uploaded right to the badging software platform. Credentials are issued by the badging platform through an email to the certificate. The certificate must then follow the link in the email to the badging platform site 
create a password, and accept the badge, a process that takes about two minutes. However, to compel the certificate to follow through may require more than one touch. Reminders are sent by the badging platform to earners who haven't accepted the badge in a certain period of time. And you may want to set up an email reminder campaign as well so that the email comes from your credentialing body. Once accepted, they can begin sharing the badge immediately on LinkedIn and other social media sites or embed the badge in their website or add a link to their email signature. This is how the digital badge appears in the certification section of a LinkedIn profile. While LinkedIn site does not currently allow for the badge visual to be seen, a click on the arrow takes you directly to the metadata of the badge. The badge can be embedded on a website or in an email signature with the same result. A click brings you right to the most current status of the earner. Next, analyze the data. All of these badging platforms come with easy to access analytics about who has claimed the badge as well as where and how many times they have shared the badge and the number of views, meaning when someone clicks on the badge and is taken to the metadata page in the badging platform. The final piece is to survey your stakeholders. The digital credential is intended to strengthen the value of the credential for the certificate. Therefore, the credentialing body should provide a brief survey to them. It is useful to understand what value do your credential holders find in having a digital representation of the credential. How do they find the process of claiming and sharing the badge? How can the experience of claiming and sharing the credential be improved? And how can you help the user leverage their digital credential? Additionally, work to engage hiring organizations within your industry. We will see the widespread growth of digital credentials when hiring organizations recognize the value and begin to demand them. So you are convinced of the value digital credentials represent on many fronts. Where do you go from here? I recommend you get started by writing down the information that would be contained within the badge. The metadata includes the credential description and the criteria by which it's earned. Next, research and select the badging platform. You'll want to start by identifying your requirements for the program. Is real-time validation needed, or does the badge remain unchanged once issued? With what other platforms would you like the badge to integrate? Moodle, Salesforce, Eventbrite, WordPress? There are a number of possibilities. How many badges will you issue in a year? What is your budget for setup? And how much will you have to spend on subsequent years? Finally, but most importantly, Create a detailed communications plan for rollout. Let certificates, employers, and other stakeholders know about the initiative in plenty of time to develop buy-in. When the credential is issued, explain in the email exactly how much time is required of the certificate to accept the badge. It's about two minutes. This may motivate people to accept the badge right away rather than forgetting about it later. Let certificates know how to leverage the credential. Give them tools to show exactly how to share on LinkedIn their email signature, website, etc. There are videos and instructions on most badging platforms. Plan a series of blog posts, newsletter articles, or other communications to span several months and raise awareness about the initiative and continue the conversation of 21st century credentials. So what's the future of credentialing and how can we shape it? A coordinated multi-sector campaign can accelerate the adoption of digital credentials, which in turn can help hiring for competency and closing the skills gap. IREC plans to continue making the digital credential available to its certificates beyond the life of the pirate. Accredited training provider organizations may be included in the future. IREC will continue to act as a resource for credentialing bodies within and beyond the clean energy industry. I hope our experience has inspired you to learn more. Please contact us at IREC with questions or to tell us about your success with digital credentials. Thank you.